Hello people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the potential of Roberto De Zerbi joining Chelsea. Of course, it has been rumoured. And with Chelsea's recent, you know, factors of uh, consistently going to Brighton, whether it's for players, staff members, boardroom members, front office people, they always tend to go to Brighton and take their, 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 their things, their assets. So... I do think that there, there will potentially be a correlation here, and I do think it's highly realistic that Pochettino does get fired, especially if he has lost the fans. And I do think that Roberto De Zerbi could be a heavy, heavy favourite to get the Chelsea job. Of course, there's more quality at Chelsea, he's got a lot more money to spend, so even though he's had a bad season so far, or not a bad season, but he has struggled quite a bit this season with Brighton, I think if you had to put him in this Chelsea side or and and you know get him you know cooking and all those good factors, I think he could work out very well. So let's have a look at the potential tactics. Of course, we've got the 4-2-3-1 as well as the 3-4-2-1 system. Now he has, you know, Deserby at Bryson has used these two formations, mainly the 4-2-3-1, but we have seen every now and then he's quite happy to revert into a back three or a back five system depending on the game and the circumstances he's not you know that's stubborn with how he likes to set out his side um although he does have his his ways of doing things so we will be discussing both of these formations in this video if you guys can please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you are new and you like content like this as well as hit the bell notifications and if you would like leave a comment rate the system out of 10 and um yes let's hop on straight into the video Okay, so taking a look at the base formation, the 4-2-3-1 wide, I've made no major changes to it apart from just moving the sense backs into those more wider channels, and that does help with the builder play. Of course, the goalkeeper restarts, the ability to play out from back to front, um, and that it, it does kind of, you know, ever so slightly help with that. But other than, than that, it's uh, no major changes to it. So therefore, it will be one goalkeeper, two sense backs, two fullbacks, one DM, and one central midfielder. I forgot to mention, that's the other slight change that we have made. Um, also, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, one striker. Okay, so progressing on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I've set is wing play for two major reasons. One is, we've seen with Brighton, they like to attack from those wider angles, attack the um, opposition fullbacks, and more or less try and create from those wider areas of the field. But at the same time, with wing play in FC24, it does allow you to be a bit more adaptable with your style of play, how you would like to play, if you would like to potentially speed up the phases of play or you know maybe you want to go long in, in certain moments so that's also why i have um set it to wing play in terms of the defense and the defensive style it's set to pressing off the possession loss now this does help with the aggressive counter pressing system that brighton and deserve have and have implemented and i do think that at chelsea we do tend to and we will see a very aggressive style of football under deserve of course we have kind of seen the good pressing uh, under pochettino so this team does have that's you know nature in them to be able to aggressively work off of the ball trying to win it back the team with is set to a nice balanced 50 a very much a man v man type system and rotation not as zonal as what you might expect although that with the player instructions there are a few zonal type positions where they need to be able to cover multiple areas of the field but more so a man v man type system with uh the defensive side of things the depth is set to 80 now this does help in and out of position looking to try and you know flood men forward push the fullbacks nice and high and wide creating overloads in those wider channels as much as possible as well um but again it does help in terms of the offensive outfit you are looking to try and play a possession based brand of football keep the the pressure on the opposition try and pin them back every now and then um, in their own half and of course that does help with uh, the high line being set to 80. The offense and the builder play is set to slow build as well as the chance creation is set to position. Now we do know that De Zerbi likes to play out from the back passing it out with the goalkeeper restarts and he will more so do this every single time. Of course he does play a very aggressive position based brand of football looking to have his midfielders play those line breaking balls in between the lines trying to feed the forwards who often go very direct in behind looking to try and exploit the space. Now, if you want to go very direct, I would obviously suggest that you have direct passing on, as well as the slow buildup and direct passing doesn't always work out that well. So go for either a fast buildup or potentially a um, balanced approach. Now that will allow you for that, that long ball approach, that ball quickly in behind, or potentially 
just to make sure that you do have your wing backs and wingers combining nicely, flooding those wider channels as much as possible and getting nice and high up the field very quickly. Um, of course, with the direct passing as well, more naturally it pushes your forwards into those more attacking spaces and trying to get them in behind. But for the normal side of things, I would go with a slow build-up and possession-based brand of football. As for the team width, it is also set to 80. Now, this is also to try and, you know, create that widening of the opposition's back line, trying to create those little half spaces, allowing the likes of a Paul Palmer and Nkunku, or whoever you have in the middle, to try and have a bit more space operating between the lines every now and then. And again, it does, uh, it does tend to stretch the opposition as much as possible. As for the players in the box, I have set it to seven, allowing for, you know, three to four players to be in and around that attacking area. Of course, with Nicholas Jackson not on the field, and we're going off of the fact that the current Chelsea side don't have much aerial threats, you do want to try and overload the attacking areas with as many targets as possible to try and, you know, supply crosses and cutbacks too. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. So, taking a look at the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper. Now, I have gone for Petrovic. I do think Sanchez can also fulfill this role very well, and he has also played under the likes of De Zerbi. But I think Petrovic, as that ball-playing goalkeeper, potentially as the number one for next season, and of course, a lot of Chelsea fans love him, um, I would go with him. I think he's a better fit for the current system. And also, De Zerbi did get rid of um, Sanchez, so it, it, could, it could work in the, in the favor of Petrovic, to be fair. Um, but for Petrovic, you want him to be able to come for crosses, which he is absolutely fantastic at, as well as be the sweeper keeper. Now, I do think that De Zerbi would have to work with him, um, adjust to the, the, the current system or, or the De Zerbi system and have him be a bit more comfortable with making those runs outside of the box, being able to play under pressure, which he does have, you know, elements of, but I think he needs to more or less try and be coached into the correct De Zerbi type way. As for the two centre-backs, We've got Desasi and Colwell, both of them are set to the same instructions, and that's mainly the balance, apart from the interceptions being set to conservative, not overly looking to engage with the opposition, looking to try and keep the structure at the back as much as possible, especially when you do have those bombing on fullbacks, which, in turn, Cucurella, as well as, um, I need to say Daniel James, as well as Reese James, have the same roles for. Now, I've gone with Cucurella over Chilwell, because I think Cucurella suits the system a bit more, having the ability to bomb up and down the, the left channel, but both James and Cucurella have the same instructions. Join the attack and the overlap and of course stick to position. As you'll see here for James, he's got the same role and instructions as well. Moving on into the midfield, of course, we'll start off with the likes of Caicedo. He is set to a bit more of a zonal approach for his defensive behavior, so therefore I've set him to cut passing lanes. And to be honest, at, at Brighton under De Zerbi, he kind of had a very similar role where the likes of McAllister was the chief creator. Of course, Caicedo was also very involved in that, but more so he was the kind of the, the destroyer in the midfield, but didn't really have a defensive natural position. He was often allowed to get forward if required or, you know, break into the space, have the ability to collect the ball and drive on creating overloads in the midfield, which is exactly the type of role that I would think De Zerbi would give Caicedo at Chelsea. So you want him for his attacking support for it to be set to balance, and this does create this nice, you know, one goes forward, the other one kind of stays back approach, which again, works very well for McAllister and Caicedo at Brighton. Of course, with Caicedo, you want him to be a bit more aggressive, a bit more of a, you know, hound dog, chasing the ball around, making sure that it's uncomfortable for the opposition to try and work it through those central areas. And again, he's very good at doing so. As for the positioning freedom, again, deep line playmaker, I do think that Caicedo under pressure is very good, almost press resistance at times, being able to collect the ball off of the goalkeeper or the potential back line, and looking to progress it into the midfield or potentially even into the forward lines. As for the defensive position, now you want him to try and cover the centers uh, or, or the central areas of the field, looking to occasionally drift into those wider spaces, bring the ball back every now and then. But most importantly, making sure that, you know, just in front of that back four, it's nice and protected as best as possible. As you'll see here for the likes of Enzo Fernandez, um, again, I've kind of modeled his role after the likes of McAllister. So again, a very good box-to-box -box type role. He can choose to stay back and create at a deeper rate or potentially get forward and help support the offense higher up the field. The support on crosses, I've set it to balance. Now, I, I think that Enzo in the box can be very good and that's more or less my preference. But if you would want, and you don't want to try and overload the, the box as much, you can set it to stay on the edge of the area. But again, I think a more balanced approach allowing him every now and then to break into that attacking area can 
one, create good overloads, and two, potentially score you more goals. The interceptions is set to normal with the defensive position set to come in center. Of course, for the positioning freedom, you want to allow for Enzo to be able to pop up in little half spaces wherever, all out throughout the entirety of the field. So whether it's higher up, you know, popping up, pulling players out of position, or potentially dropping a bit deeper and helping support Caicedo. Of course, Caicedo is set to being the deep line playmaker, and you kind of want Enzo to have a very similar role, but not exactly dropping that deep to you know collect the ball all the time as for the likes of um cole palmer now i think palmer in a deserve system is a better fit in the, the the more natural number 10 role he's got the height and the physicality to you know play in the midfield um and i do think that sometimes under potch on the wing it is you know lost have him more central dictating the pace of play helping with the ball of play helping facilitate for the players in and around him I think you can potentially get the best out of him in the in the more natural position that he has in the number 10 role. So the defensive support is said to come back on defense, often looking to drop a bit deeper and help support the double pivots. The support on crosses, just like with Fernandez, is set to balance, allowing for either or to be able to break into the box or potentially stand on the edge of the area and look to try and facilitate. The positioning freedom is set to free room, allowing him to drift all throughout the higher end of the field, pulling players out of position, popping up in the little half spaces, working his way into the channels and being a very good goal threat um, and potential facilitator for the other players in and around him. As for the interceptions, we know Palmer is very good at pressing, being very good at, you know, closing down spaces and potential passing lanes for, for the opposition to try and play through. Um, and therefore, you want to try and replicate that role under Deserby very effectively. And therefore, I think aggressive interceptions best suits him. So moving on to your left and your right midfielders, both Mudrik and Madaweke. I think that they would suit Deserby more than what Sterling and as well as Palmer would on the wings. And um, they, the one thing that they are really good at is being able to take on a man, be very direct, getting in behind. Um, and they'll also both have the same set of instructions. So looking to help back um, on defense as much as possible, supporting the fullbacks in those wider channels. The chance creation is set to balance, allowing them to, yes, hug the touchlines when required. But if you do have that supportive bombing on overlapping fullback, you want your wingers to invert a bit more, be inside forwards every now and then, linking up very effectively with the midfield players. Most importantly, though, is the support runs. So yes, you will be having this uh, very slow down, slow paced um, possession based brand of football. But every now and then you want your wider players to make those runs in behind. And when that happens, there's always going to be a really good switch of play. So whether Palmer or Fernandez or even Caicedo have the ball, I mean, even Colwell to be fair, if they have the ball, you should look for that long ball in behind to try and exploit the opposition with. As for the support on crosses, it's set to balance, allowing them to break into the box every now and then, or potentially link up very effectively on the edge of the area. As for the interceptions with the counter pressing measures that you are looking to try and create, I've set it to aggressive, allowing them to, you know, close down the passing lanes, close down the opposition's backline, force them into errors, force them into going long and essentially playing into the hands of your back line. As you'll see here for the right midfielder, Madaweke, he's got the same roles and instructions as well. Okay, so onto the likes of Christopher Nkunku. Now, this role, I, I don't know how really to describe it because it's it's more of a false nine that does tend to get in behind. We have seen in the past, obviously at Brighton, Danny Welbeck has been used. And again, Danny Welbeck can be a very good physical target man when required, but every now and then, You've, you've seen De Zerbi, you know, throughout instructions, tell him to drop deep, drop off of the back line. And I think that particular role for Nkunku, especially in the system, would work very well. Having him drop deep, having him almost play as a secondary number 10 with a bit more of an advanced type mentality, or allowing for Palmer every now and then to also overlap and exchange positions with him. I think that could be the best possible role for him. So, in order to try and replicate that, very hard. The support runs is set to balance. Of course, Nkunku, yes, he is a striker. Yes, he is a center forward, but he's not naturally that. He he started off as a midfielder, drifted over to the wing, found some success as a winger. And then in the season where RB Leipzig, you know, he scored those 16 goals and was an absolute bomb.com up in front of goal. He was a striker, but a secondary striker, not the main guy up front. He was playing in a front two, but he would always drop off. And kind of, you, you are trying to replicate that role, allow him to have a bit more freedom, not really being the focal points as a number nine. So you want him to be able to drift in and out of those central channels as much as possible, pulling players out of position, opening up space for the, the forwards that will be in and around him, and essentially just creating havoc in the back line of the opposition specifically, not knowing whether they should stick 
or or you know stay with the man or they, they won't know and that's more or less the the craziness that you are trying to replicate with this role the attacking runs is set to mix allowing them to yes break in behind other times have that hold up play mentality or even he has a false line dropping a bit deeper getting on the ball and looking to drive at the opposition i think that is his most underrated factor about Nkungu, his ability to aggressively drive at the opposition um and again creating overloads in those wider spaces as well the interceptions is set to aggressive and then finally the support or the defensive support i should say is set to come back on defense often dropping a bit deeper dropping off of the opposition's back line and again it does create that sense of should the defender go with the man or not or stick and essentially that does create a whole lot of miscommunications for the opposition as well as it allows for the likes of palmer to every now and then overlap the more natural striker in nkunku and it does allow for nkunku to sometimes take up that number 10 position okay so moving on to the back three system now like i said earlier we have seen the zerbi use this with brighton and it has been specific occasions when they went to anfield and drew three three and trossard scored the hat trick he used the back three system and he has used it every now and then this season i know the other day against fulham when they did lose they used the back three system and that could have been down to injuries and whatnot but i also think that chelsea have a very suitable team that can flourish in a back three de zerbi type system I, I also think that the likes of Reese James, obviously a very good attacking right back. I think due to his injuries and, and all that, he could make as a very, very good right-sided centre-back, almost an Aspilla Quetta type centre-back where he does have the license to get forward, but he will play on the right-hand side of the back three, allowing him for every now and then to bomb forward, whip and crosses, be an offensive outlet. So you'll see with the instructions and whatnot, what we've tried to essentially do for him in that right-handed sided or right-sided centre-back role. Um, but other than that, I think Gusto as well as Cucurella in this formation work very well, having the ability to bomb up and down either flank. But I will also say this, because they do have that more aggressive type role, you do find that they do get tied very quickly. So maybe looking for more fullbacks could also be very effective, especially if you are going to use a system like this. So moving on to the formation. Now I have selected the 3-4-2-1 system and I've only really changed two positions. The left and the right midfielder, I've dropped them down ever so slightly, lining them up very nicely with the two central midfielders. And then of course I have also widened the back three system, just uh, the left and the right side of centre back, moving them out ever so slightly as well. So therefore it will be one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two central midfielders, two wider midfielders, two centre forwards, and then of course one striker. Now, as for the tactics, I have made no major changes to them. I've gone with more or less the same roles and the, the same core values, you could say, for a Deserby system. So therefore, it would be wing play for the tactical vision, the defensive style still set to possession or pressing off to possession loss, I should say. The team width is still set to 50 with the depth still being set to 80. Um, Builder play is set to slow as well as possession. Of course, with this system, I always like to think that Deserby is looking for a bit more control from the back line. So those Builder plays and the possession-based brand of football, he does tend to work the ball very nicely. Or often when Brighton do play this back three system, they do have a lot of the ball possession in the, the back line with the, the three centre backs. So try and, you know, work with that. But again, if you would like to go a bit more direct, set to direct with the balanced builder play. And that, I think that can work out very well because, of course, you can create those overloads going forward. For the width, it is still set to 80 and the plays in the box is also still set to 7. And again, like I said, there's no major change to it. The corners and the free kicks are still set to four. So moving on to the instructions, of course, we've got the likes of Petrovic and I've, I've more or less kept his role as the same. You don't need to change too much. In fact, it's more important right now that you do have a super keeper and an aggressive type of player that can read the game and step out of his box, step off of his line and claim the ball back when under pressure. As for the likes of Desasi, he's got the base set of instructions apart from the interceptions being set to conservative. As for Colwell, as well as Reese James, both of them are going to be a bit more of the aggressors of the sense back um, back three, allowing them to drift into those wider channels, show some support for the fullbacks when they are nice high and wide, um, and also looking to try and overload in those wider channels. So they are both going to be set to overlap. So into your midfield now, both Caicedo and Fernandez have very similar roles, with Caicedo having a bit more of a defensive awareness to his game plan. So. He, uh, for Caicedo, he is going to be told to stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box, not always looking to break in there, looking to try and, you know, just facilitate and rotate play when required. Aggressive interceptions, of course, looking to try and use his stamina um, and his chaos in the midfield to try and win the ball back as much as possible. 
Of course, you want that, you want both of your central midfielders because you, you are quite light in that area. You want both of them to remain central as well as stick to position. As for the likes of Fernandez, again, stay back while attacking, stand there to the box, but normal interceptions, and then of course, cover the center and stick to position. Onto your left and your right midfielder, both of them have the exact same instructions. Come back on defense, a balance width, get from behind, aggressive interceptions, and then of course, stand there to the stay on the edge of the box. Now, I will say with the, these tactics, every now and then you do see the fullbacks breaking into the box, but they don't arc their runs more centrally. They tend to, you know, attack the back post area, which is quite nice. The comeback on defense, of course, it makes the most sense. You, they are they are essentially going to be fullbacks, but they do have a slightly higher starting, more natural starting position. The width is set to balance, because every now and then with a Deserbi system, in order to try and create overloads, whether it's on the flanks or potentially more centrally, he does want and require his fullbacks to, you know, invert every now and then. So that's why a more balanced width suits them. And then, of course, you want them to consistently be breaking in behind, penetrating the opposition's backline as much as possible. As you'll see here for Gusto, he's got the same role and instructions as well. Okay, so onto the likes of Palmer and Nkunku, the center forward slash, you know, number 10s in the team. Both of them, again, have the exact same roles. Drift wide, false nine, aggressive interceptions, and then, of course, come back on defense. Now, you want them to be able to, again, create overloads in those wider channels, you know, kind of vacate the more central areas every now and then, and they do tend to sometimes hug the touchlines and show some support along either flank. The full start approach, you want them to be able to drop a bit deeper, get on the ball, look to try and create and facilitate, and also pull the opposition's back line out of positions, either, again, allowing for them to follow the likes of Palmer or Nkunku into the deeper midfield, or potentially having them stay high and wide, and or potentially just staying back and allowing for Palmer and Nkunku to try and create and facilitate at a deeper rate. Of course, the interceptions, you want them to have that nice counter-pressing measure, so aggressive interceptions is going to be turned on for both. As you'll see here, for the likes of Nkunku, he's got the same role and instructions. Okay, so onto the likes of Jackson. Now, I've selected Jackson, obviously, because he is the only other recognized striker in the side that's got quality to his game. And with a role like this, we've seen Evan Ferguson be very effective up front, having more or less the players in and around him supply the ball into his more attacking talent. So with the likes of Jackson, of course, I know he's not the best target man, but he can do that role very nicely. You want him to be able to hold the ball up, be the linchpin higher up the field, link up play very nicely, and he does tend to, you know, do this. And I think, you know, Jackson has had a bit of issues with his back to goal. And of course, most Chelsea fans will also say he's better as a left winger, as a guy who runs in behind. And I do think that that is true. But also under De Zerbi, I think he would more naturally see Jackson as a centre forward um, slash, you know, actual number nine. So he could coach that into him, allow him to develop. Uh, I mean, Jackson's still young. He's what, 23, 24? So yes, you could still have a very good target man on your hands. In terms of the support runs, however, I have set it to balance. Now, this allows him to attack the central areas as well as potentially drifting into those wider channels every now and then, which again, is very much known for what Jackson can do. Um, the interceptions is set to aggressive, and then finally, the ability for him to drop off the back line, come back and help support the defense is a necessity. Often, he can look to try and start his attacks from the, you know, edge of the area of the box and look to work his way into the attacking third, or potentially, you know, just be in and around the center backs of the opposition. But at the same time, you want to try and protect your back line as much as possible. So having your striker drop a bit deeper can also help. Okay, my dude, so I have put down, you know, a few players on a short list that I think would both suits Chelsea as well as, you know, Deserby with his various systems. So I've gone for the likes of Jordan Tezza. Of course, he can play as a right back or a center back, especially if you do play that, you know, back three system. He can fill in very effectively for Reese James. Another right back that I think would suit the replacement for Gusto would be the likes of Dodo, obviously plays for Fiorentina. Um, again, more of the attacking, bombing on fullback, has loads of stamina, isn't the tallest, but can provide some very good attacking out there when going forward. The, I, I've put down three sense backs here. So I know Chelsea have sense backs to Sarsi, you know, Fafana, Betashile. Of course, um, Thiago Silva is probably going to be leaving. And I, I don't, I think Betashile is very good, and obviously I do rate Polwell, but De Sarsi as well as Fafana, I, I don't rate them. So I do think that this summer, you know, Chelsea will be looking to bring in better quality players. And to be honest, Antonio Silva is an up-and-coming 19-year-old, does have some very good badges, the long pass, which is essentially what De Zerbi wants in his side in order to make his system very successful. You need good ball-playing centre-backs that can play out under pressure, can also read the game very well. That's what Lewis Dunk, as well as Voltman and, you know, Webster are all very good at. Um, so again, 
Antonio Silva could be a very good option, as well as Osmane Diamande. Now, again, a good ball playing sense back, very good in the air, very physical, also only 19 years of age. Link with a move to Arsenal, and we know Chelsea loves stealing Arsenal targets, so he could be a, a fantastic move for them. And then, of course, I've gone for Boscaglia, or Boscagli. Um, slightly, you know, undersized, 5'11", but again, a good ball playing sense back, and he is also left footed, so he can, you know, fill in for the likes of Colwell if need be. Um, and then in terms of the left back area, I've gone for Parisi. I think he's a fantastic talent. Um, Cambiaso is also very good from, you know, Serie A. But I think he could be a more natural fit for the system alongside Cucurella. And I would say maybe getting rid of Chilwell would be a, a must. I think Parisi offers a lot more, not as injury prone either. Um, as you can see with the play style, he's got the rapid approach. Um, so yeah, he does have loads of pace on his hands. Uh, moving on into the midfield, we've got the likes of Schoten. Sh uh, also, that long pass, ball in behind, the ability to play through the um, opposition with the press as well. Very good at doing so. Very good at, you know, stifling the op opposition's builder play. More of a, a natural DM that can also slot into the back line if need be. Um, and again, I think he could suit this Chelsea system very, very well. As you'll also see here, maybe Antonio Silva and Diamande might be very expensive, but I haven't gone for, you know, these superstar talents because one, I do think that Chelsea will more or less hone back the the buying in the summer, especially with FFP cracking down on them. Um, and I think that they, they, they'll have a bit more structure to what they're looking for. So again, that's also why I've gone for, you know, the lesser names and not the, the superstars in, the, in world football currently. Um, another player that could easily come in and be a bit more of a direct winger on that right-hand side, of course, with the likes of Sterling possibly leaving, um, Madaweke hasn't really worked out that well, but maybe under deserve he could. But I would look at the likes of Nicolas Gonzalez, a very good direct winger, ball at his feet, can create out of nothing basically. Um, also from Fiorentina, starts off on the, the left hand side or potentially even the right, very good at playing on either flank. Um, is left footed, so that makes me think that, you know, deserve would look to try and use him on that right hand side a bit more. Um, he's got the Travella pass or, or you know, touch. Um, a magnetic first touch as well as a technical dribbler for the play styles. Again, I think it would suit this Chelsea system hand in glove. Um, and then moving on into the striker roles. I've got both Tony as well as Jokeresh and then Joshua Xerxes. Now, I think all of these players would very much flourish in the Zerbi system, whether it's playing in the 4-2-3-1 or even the 3-4-2-1 um, system. So... Yeah, both, oh, sorry, all three of them have very good hold-up play and ability. All three of them have the ability to break in behind, use their pace, use their ability to link up very nicely with the players in and around them. And I do think that Jokeresh is the best option for Chelsea. Of course, he would cost a lot of money in real life. In the game, though, I would assume it's it's like 60 million, but you'd also have to wait for the second season to do so. Um, my personal favorites, just what I would go with, is Joshua Xerxes. I think he's got the whole bag plus more. He's six foot four, airily dominance. The ability for him to play as a false nine, you wouldn't have to tweak the system that much. Um, and then of course you've got Ivan Tony, who is English. So English tax is going to be a thing. He does have the power header though, which could be very effective for whipping in crosses. Um, and of course he does have the ability to hold the ball up very well, as well as a very high good work rate to his game. But either way, just some options for you to potentially consider for your career modes with a Deserbi system. And there you have it, people. That is how I would replicate Deserbi's tactics in this current Chelsea side. If you have enjoyed this video, as per always, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you are new. And as for always, I'll catch you guys tomorrow with the next set of, you know, tactics videos. Anyways, I'm out. Enjoy your day.